There are many different kinds of green plants, different in size and shape and in several other ways. These differences are called adaptations. Adaptations help each kind of living thing to survive in its own environment. In order to understand the many different adaptations of plants, we first need to remember one way in which all green plants are alike. All green plants are able to make their own food. That means a green plant is different from a fungus like the mushroom. A fungus is sometimes considered to be a plant, but it can't make food the way a green plant does. Usually, the leaves are where most of the food is made. A green plant combines carbon dioxide gas and water to make a simple sugar. To do that, the plant needs energy, and it gets that energy from light. All green plants make food in the same way, but each type of plant also has other special adaptations. Some adaptations help a plant to grow in a particular place. Some plants are especially adapted to a water environment. Water lilies, and some other plants, depend on the water to support their weight. A water lily has large leaves adapted for floating on the surface of the water, where they can collect the light energy needed to make food. There are many other plants that are adapted for growth in moist places on land. Most of these plants have stems that are strong enough to support their weight. There are some plants, like this morning glory, that have weak stems. But these stems have an adaptation that helps them find some other kind of support. This action is being speeded up in the camera. The stem moves back and forth until it touches something and then it winds itself around the object and uses it for support. Because each kind of plant has its own special adaptations, it's possible for many different plants to grow in the same surroundings, in a forest, for example. A tall tree has a large stem, or trunk, and so the leaves of these trees are raised high above the ground, where they can receive plenty of direct sunlight. Some plants are adapted for growth in the shade of the trees. These plants usually have larger, thinner leaves. That's an adaptation that helps them to collect more light energy. Forest plants like these can grow only in places where there is plenty of rainfall. But there are other plants that are adapted to the dry climate of the desert. Most kinds of cactus have no leaves at all, and that helps to save water. Large leaves would give up too much water to the air. But even without leaves, a cactus is able to make food. The food is made in the stem, and because the stem is soft and spongy, it can also store a lot of water. These adaptations help a cactus plant to survive for several months without rain. When a rainstorm does come to the desert, it usually doesn't last very long. But a cactus has roots that spread out underground for a long way, even though they don't go very deep. That means the roots can soak up a lot of water in just a short time. So desert plants like the cactus are adapted to a very dry climate. In the temperate climate region, Plants have special adaptations for survival in winter. During autumn, as the hours of daylight grow shorter, many trees form a waterproof seal at the base of each leaf. When that happens, the leaves change color and begin to fall. That's an adaptation that helps this kind of tree to stay alive in winter. Large leaves like this lose a lot of water to the air, and in winter, the tree will need to save all the water it can. Some trees, like this pine, have small, narrow leaves called needles, and these trees can stay green all year long. Because the needles are so narrow, they don't lose much water to the air. So trees like this are able to make food even during the winter. Some other plants, 
like the chrysanthemum, have a different adaptation for survival in winter. Parts of the plant, the parts above the ground, will freeze and die when cold weather comes. But the parts underneath the ground will usually stay alive and start to grow again in spring. So plants are adapted in various ways for survival through the winter. And gradually, the days become longer and warmer. Soon the trees will begin to produce new leaves. But in early spring, the leaves are too small to block the sunlight from the ground below. Some plants, like the May apple, are adapted to begin growing early in spring, when they can receive plenty of direct sunlight. As the days pass, the leaves of the trees grow larger, and they cast their shadows on the ground. Now, many other plants have appeared, plants adapted for growth without as much direct sunlight. We've seen several ways in which different plants are adapted for growth in a specific place and a specific climate. There are other kinds of adaptations that help to protect plants from animals, especially from insects. Without this protection, plant life could easily be destroyed entirely by plant-eating insects. Some plants, like the milkweed, produce chemicals that are poisonous to most animals. Only a few kinds of insects are able to feed safely on milkweed leaves. This monarch butterfly caterpillar has an adaptation that protects it from the poison. But most other animals avoid the milkweed plant, and so the plant is able to survive. Plants like cabbage also make a chemical that's poisonous to most insects. Of course, people can eat cabbage without getting sick. That's because we don't have the same body chemistry as an insect. A cactus plant has another kind of adaptation for protection. Its sharp spines help to prevent most animals from eating the cactus. Some other plants, like roses, have thorns that help to protect the plant from animals. The mimosa plant has thorns, and it also has another adaptation for protection. Watch what happens when something touches a leaf. This adaptation helps to bring the leaves closer to the thorns. Any animal that tried to eat the leaf would run into the thorns. Grass plants provide food for many animals, but usually those animals don't do any permanent harm to the grass plant. That's because grass has an adaptation that helps to keep the most important parts from being destroyed. The growing part of a grass blade is down very close to the ground, where it won't be eaten by most grazing animals. So even though most of the grass blade is eaten, the growing part is protected, and it can replace the parts that are lost. So some adaptations help to prevent plants from being destroyed by animals. There are other adaptations that help plants to reproduce themselves. We're watching the seed of a pine tree beginning to grow, with the action speeded up in the camera. Most plants grow from seeds. That's a form of sexual reproduction. The reproductive parts of a pine tree are in the cones that hang from the branches. There are two kinds of cones. These cones are male, and they produce pollen, which contains the male sex cell. The pollen is a loose powder that can be carried by the wind to the female pine cones. When that happens, the female cones produce seeds. There are several kinds of trees that make seeds in cones, but most plants don't have cones. Most plants have flowers instead, and the flowers are where the reproductive parts are located. Some plants, like this rice plant, have small flowers that aren't very colorful. This kind of plant depends on the wind to carry its pollen. But many plants have large, beautiful flowers. This action is being speeded up in the camera. The color and shape of the flower are important adaptations that help the plant to reproduce itself. 
Plants like this depend on certain kinds of animals to carry their pollen, and their flowers can be seen easily by insects or birds. The flowers also produce a sweet liquid called nectar. Nectar is used as food by some birds, including the hummingbird. And some insects also feed on nectar. These flowers make a pollen that is very sticky. When an insect or bird comes looking for nectar, the pollen will stick to the body of the animal. Then when the animal visits another flower of the same kind, some of the pollen will rub off and the plant will be able to make seeds. Some flowers, like the vetch, are adapted to take advantage of the body shape or habits of a certain insect or bird. A bee usually lands on the lowest petals of a flower, and when those petals are pressed down, the vetch flower releases pollen. Some of the pollen sticks to the bee and will be carried away to another flower of the same kind. The shape of an iris flower helps to make sure that its pollen will be carried away. A bee has to crawl deep into the flower in order to get the nectar. This means that the bee is sure to rub against the parts of the flower that make pollen. The flowers of a plant last for only a short time. When the plant is ready to make seeds, parts of the flower wilt and fall off. The part that's left will grow into the fruit of the plant. Inside the fruit are the seeds that can grow into a new plant. Some plants produce their flowers only in spring, some only in summer, and some only in autumn. That means that all of the plants are not competing at the same time for the attention of the animals that carry their pollen. And so we've seen several different adaptations of plants. Adaptations that help a plant to reproduce itself. Adaptations that help to protect plants from being destroyed by animals. And adaptations that make it possible for a plant to grow in a certain kind of place. Many different kinds of plants can live together in the same surroundings because each kind has its own adaptations that help it to survive in its own special way. <laughs>